Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about one of the strongest builds in Diablo 4. It all revolves around the Rogue. The Rogue has one specific skill that makes all of its abilities do so much more. In my opinion, Shadow Imbuement is easily one of the most fun abilities to use, and one of the most fun to really use in the entire game, not just on the Rogue, but in general. So, this is going to be revolving around the Shadow Imbuement Twisting Blades Trap Rogue build. So I have been able to test this build out quite a bit, and I will say later in the game, it actually is very, very viable as well as the early. So because of that, it's going to be a great build to level up with, as well as when you're at max level to test out yet again with all of the legendary aspects equipped. We will get into the skills and the legendary aspects that you are going to want to hunt for in just a second. But before we do so, guys, I do want to say that this build is a full focus on, on building energy, vulnerability to enemies, crowd control, critical strike chance, lucky hit, and movement speed stats. And we also want to use the inner sight rogue class mechanic. This can really be the inner force that will push us to actually kill much faster and many more enemies. So I do want to say, guys, before we get too much farther into this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you guys can learn more about Diablo 4 and all of the different build varieties out there in this game. So to start us off with the skills, we are going to take Blade Shift. Basically, you're going to quickly stab your victim for 15% damage and shift, allowing you to move freely through enemies for three seconds, making sure that we are not going to get stuck in some crazy mobs and make sure that we're not going to get unlucky and killed in uh, some of these bigger and harder areas. Uh, it's going to be just taking one point, by the way, of the Blade Shift, and then from there we are going to take the Enhanced Blade Shift, so damaging an enemy with Blade Shift gains plus 5% movement speed while Blade Shift is active up to 20%. It's a very, very strong passive to have there. So from there, guys, we are going to come down and take the Twisting Blades. We're going to take this to rank 5 as quickly as possible, really maximize our damage. Um, and I will say, guys, you can take this in any route possible, but this is going to be about level 25, level 26, level 27 that you're going to be able to get as much as what I have selected here um, to your character. So Twisting Blades, definitely take this to rank 5. Then we're going to take the Enhanced Twisting Blades, which basically gives us more damage while the blades are on their returning route. And then we have the advanced twisting blades, which when your twisting blades return, your active cooldowns are reduced by one second per enemy they pass through. So if there's a lot of enemies, you're going to have this constantly up and you're going to be able to do a ton, a ton of damage. So very, very strong to have those passives. We're also going to come down here and we're going to take sturdy. So you gain 4% close damage reduction as well as siphoning strikes. Heal for 3% of your maximum life when you critically strike close enemies. It's going to make sure that you are staying alive very, very well in some of these big mob or big herd areas. We also have the side over here, more passives, of course. The stutter step, critically striking an enemy, grants 15% movement speed for 4 seconds. This build is going to be all about mobility and getting around quickly. And that's what you'll see. And that's why we've taken now two passives or three fact. Uh, I think it's about three passes focused on movement speed. Um, let's go down a little bit farther, though. We are going to see that we're not going to take any of the agility skills. That's because we don't really need a dash. We don't need shadow step or cow traps because we have so much just regular pure movement. Um, we're also going to see that we are going to take some of these passives here. So we have the rapid gambits, which your evade cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds when you daze an enemy. You also have the concussive. So after knocking back or knocking down an enemy, you gain plus 15% critical increase critical strike chance against them for those three seconds. We have that to rank three. And then last but not least, on the passive train of the agility skills, we have the trick attack. So when you critically strike a dazed enemy, they are knocked down for 0.5 seconds, going to allow us to do so much damage to some of these enemies. Going down, the, like I said, to some of the abilities that we can take in the kind of trap section, we are going to take poison trap. So this is going to basically place a trap that arms after 1.25 seconds and it activates when an enemy moves within the range, poisoning all of the enemies over 9 seconds in the area. Very, very strong. We're also going to take the enhanced poison trap, which basically knocks down the enemies for 1.5 seconds when it activates. And then we're going to take the countering poison trap. This poison trap has a 20% chance to reset your imbuement skill cooldowns when activated. And then on the right side, you're going to see that we're going to be taking even more traps. That's going to be the Dark Shroud. So surround yourself with up to five protective shadows. Gain 8% damage reduction per active shadow. Each time you take direct damage, the damage 
is reduced and the shadow is consumed. From there, we're going to be taking the passive Enhanced Dark Shadow, or the Enhanced Dark Shroud, I should say, which basically gives the Dark Shroud's shadows 10% chance to not be consumed, and then Subverting Dark Shroud, which is going to be each active shadow from the Dark Shroud can grant you plus 3% increased movement speed so imagine how quickly we are moving without even using any dashes on the rogue and wasting some active ability slots so if we go down even farther this is going to be the obvious shadow imbuement that we talked about a very very strong ability from there we're going to be taking the enhanced shadow imbuement and of course the blended shadow imbuement making sure that we are going to make so many different enemies vulnerable and taking even more damage from there, we're also going to be taking the passives Shadow Crash. Shadow Crash is going to, or Shadow Damage, I should say, it has a 10% chance to stun for 0.5 seconds. So that's really nice to see. And we have the Consuming Shadows. So each time you kill an enemy with Shadow Damage, you actually generate 30 energy, which is huge. It's going to be a huge way to get our energy back and make sure we have energy sustainability. And uh, Consuming Shadow is definitely a great passive to take. I will say a Precision Imbuement is another great one for damage. The Imbued skills gain plus 15% increased critical strike chance, so every time you're imbuing, just imagine the amount more of damage you are going to be able to do. From there, we're going to come down here and take the Death Trap in the Ultimate Skills. The Death Trap is going to place a trap that arms after 1.25 seconds. It activates when an enemy moves within range, dealing a total of 250% damage to each enemy in the area. So Prime Death Trap and Supreme Death Trap from there, of course. And if we take a look at some of the passes we're taking, we're going to take Trap Mastery. So when Poison Traps or Death Traps activates, you gain plus 12% increased critical strike chance against vulnerable and crowd-controlled enemies for 4 seconds. If you guys have been paying attention, the crowd control is throughout this build. We have a lot of knockbacks, knockdowns, and that's why we're going to make sure we take the Trap Mastery. Innervation is next in the list, and it's going to be up to 30% chance to gain 8 energy. We have that to rank 3 as well. We have Alchemist Fortune, non-physical damage you deal, has a 15% chance or increased chance to lucky hit, which is great to see as well, and that's why we're going to take that to rank 3. Going down, we have more passives. We have the Adrenaline Rush. So while moving, 5% increased energy regeneration. Very nice to have, as we're always going to be moving for the most part. And then haste is the big one. That is the one we're actually going to be taking to rank three. Um, so basically, while we're above that 50% maximum energy, you gain even more movement speed. While below 50% maximum energy, you gain attack speed. It's an obvious take, in my opinion, with passives. It's going to be very, very solid for just utility movement speed yet again. When we come to the key passives in the bottom right, Victimize, Lucky Hit, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has up to 30% chance to cause an explosion, dealing 23% of the original damage to them and surrounding enemies. So, last but not least, let's go up to the legendary aspects and talk about which aspects you guys should be hunting for and using on this build. So to start off, we have the Andreal's Visage. I might be saying that wrong. Andreal's Visage, probably how you say it. But it's a unique helm basically going to give you a chance to trigger a Poison Nova that applies poisoning damage over five seconds to enemies in the area. We have many more. Mangler's Aspect, Frostburn, to, to marry. Uh, I will say, guys, I'm not going to walk through every single one of these because you can read them pretty quickly and understand why they'd fit the build. But Temerity is another solid pants that you will be wanting to grab. Obviously, the aspect doesn't always have to be in that specific slot, but some of these do. Uh, we also have the aspect of the shared misery. We have the Sky Hunter. We would like to have Doombringer. We would like to have the Icy Alchemist aspect, the aspect of corruption the Toxic Alchemist aspect, and then, of course, Blade Dancer's aspect as well. So these are the legendary aspects you should be hunting for with this specific build. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have not already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. We'll be doing many more guides and videos and builds on Diablo 4 in the upcoming months ahead. Thank you guys again. I'll see you all in the next one.